GPT 4.5 preview. This was a soft launch and kind of went under the radar. Uh, but it's kind of like rolling out and it's available uh, in a lot of places, not in the ChatGPT app because you have to be a pro member, I believe. But in Cursor, I have, you know, a GPT 4.5 preview. Now, the first thing I want to discuss is the pricing because it's absolutely expensive. Uh, people were complaining about Claude 3.7, but look at this. In Cursor, um, as you know, you can pay a monthly $20, but if you want to use something like O1 or GPT 4.5 preview, look at this, 200 cents per request, which is absolutely nuts. I only did four requests, it's good, but it's just not very affordable. And it came down to $8. Now, you know, as some of you know, I've been building this, um, you know, dream cut video editor. And I, you know, in the past few days, I build really complex uh, features. I know that some people are complaining, for example, okay, well, you know, it's, it doesn't work for everyone. Obviously, each model has their own sort of like quirks. And with time and as you get to know and kind of depending on the complexity or your own experience because you have to re review the code, it's, it's not going to work for everyone. But for me, it works really well and for a lot of people too. Now, let me explain the complexity of the features that I'm building. First of all, multi-selection. So if I want to select multiple and I want to edit all of these at the same time, then I, I will be able to do that now by you know having sort of like the same UI applying to all of them. So for example, if, if I want to change to you know light mode or dark mode or clean mode, and it's going to apply to all of them. So here you can see this is black and this is all white. So this is multi-selection. The second thing that I did was to be able to chat with AI and edit the video. So for example, I can say something like, yeah, you know, change the first video of the camera um, and I put it to the top left and it's going to apply that and uh, it should be working. Yes, okay. I don't know why it didn't apply. So uh, <laughs> let me try again. Um, all right, so let me see, you know, like, for example, change the all, all instances of Claude in the captions to Sonnet, for example. So now it's going to kind of list all the updates. Sure, I, c I should definitely add like a UI for this, but you can see, you know, every instance of the subtitle that was Claude before, now it's just Sonnet. So I think it's pretty cool and I would definitely like to explore more of that. So as you can see, these are fairly complex uh, features. And just to give you an example of how much code, I'm gonna go to my source here and you can see I can just mouse over, um, you know, how many insertions and deletions and all that stuff. So you can see a lot of commits for multi-track selection because it affects so many things. It affects videos, audio tracks, uh, text tracks, and, and so on. Um, keep in mind that I only did four GPT-4 preview um, uh, prompts. But the rest are all, you know, Sonnet 3.7. Sometimes I do use 3.5 because, yes, you know, it's getting slower and slower over time. So what is going on here you can see there's a lot of insertions for multi selection but also ai chat when um you know fixing stuff or to be able to edit videos and all that stuff so 475 insertions 440 so a lot of stuff that is happening here and a lot of prompts if you look at the history of prompts and yeah, I try to kind of like put features one by one. 
I don't want to have like a super long chat for every single feature. But this is essentially how I work. And this is kind of like the pricing. Again, Claude 3.7, which is really cool, is that it's included. And uh, that's, yeah. And speaking of like the performance of Sonnet 3.7, one thing to note is that it's pretty consistent in how it's working. So as I mentioned before, I implemented this in the Figma plugin and you can see that it's able to do really complex UI, including this one, for example. You can see that this, you know, ask any designer how they're gonna implement this in code or even developer. They're gonna have a really, really hard time. Why? Let me give you an example. So these are floating elements. There's a lot of borders, which are not standard. And also the, you know, the division of these borders is very intricate, which is not typically very easy to do. As you can see, Sonnet 3.7 is able to do that really beautifully. And yeah, I can change like the, the background to be lighter. It does have a little bit of trouble with the outline and here it put the card information at the top left for some reason. But let's compare this to, for example, if I go to, so this is the, um, I think it's the checkout card, okay. So this is 3.7, right? And then uh, I did multiple, maybe not multiple times, but I wonder if I can show you an example of different ones. But okay, it seems that I haven't done that. So what I'm gonna show you is another example. So let's go with this one, 3.7. I'm gonna go with a, a darker background because it's a light you know, uh, UI. So it's, I believe it's this one right here. And you can see that 3.7 is able to do this really well. Now, of course, it's not perfect. It's very, very complex. These are floating elements, meaning that each of these dots are not using auto layout and you know like it's it's a chart so it's it's going to be difficult but a traditional ui is the top portion this it was able to do it even though the complexity of how this little uh, ring here is not that easy to do uh, it was not able to do the progress correctly but it is able to do the outline the colors the gradient and all that stuff so it's pretty good and, um, you know, it's also able to do, you know, layout really well, so, which is really cool. And, um, and then we're going to take a look at how it compares to the other uh, versions. So, for example, 4.0, this one, you can see it completely misses the mark. You know, the columns are completely wrong. And, you know, like the alignment of the text, even the basic layout here, it's not able to do it correctly. 3.5, it's able to do it better. You can see that the easy layout at the top is doing better, but the chart, which is the hard part, is able to do the column correctly, but not the dots, which is the hardest part. And 3.7, uh, yes, it does miss some things, but at least it does most things correctly. So you can see the difference between the two. And let's take a look at another example. This is 4.0, uh, 3.5, and then 3.7, right? So very night and day difference. So this is kind of like what we're dealing with. And let's take a look at the API, okay? Because as I mentioned before, it's very unaffordable. So here we're talking about 75 input and 150 output. It is, I believe, available via the API, so I would be able to implement that, but it would be extremely expensive um, to generate some of these Figma to code using the plugin that I built. And, you know, to give you an example, right, so if I, if I go to the API for Claude, you can see that it's 
$3.75 for input and 15 for output. So we're talking about roughly five times the price or even more. So 10 times, right? 15 to 150, we're talking about 10 times the pricing for, uh, for output. So, you know, I'm limited in my ability to show you, um, but what I can tell you though, from experience and from the four prompts that I did using cursor is that I think the performance in coding is, is similar. It might be a little bit slower than 3.7, um, but my daily driver right now is 3.7 uh, uh, Sonnet. And uh, if I wanna go faster, because yes, when you have these thinking mode, when we have the agentic th things, it tends to you know, um, look for a lot of context, uh, you know, through a lot of prompts, a lot of steps, and it takes longer to get a feature going. But at least when you're building something as complex as DreamCut, for example, you know, you, you don't have a choice, right? It, you know, the, the other alternative to not have agents is that you have to go through multiple prompts and you have to include all the files. You have to have really good knowledge of the code base. But when you do it using agent, then you have one prompt. It does all of these steps for you without you having to do any of that stuff. It's not perfect, sure, but it works. And for something as complex as a feature like this one, right? it's able to do that really, really nicely. As you can see, you know, selection, if I have multiple types of UI and uh, tracks, you know, it's able to detect how many tracks are being edited at the same time for video, for audio, and for text. So these are really complex stuff. When I make one change, it changed all of them all at once, and so, yeah, you know, like the same with the UI here, able to edit multiple tracks at the same time. You know, I can even like record my video. It generates all the, you know, all the subtitles. You know, I can set my styles globally. I can also set my styles individually. So this is a ton of control. And then once I have all of this text, which is why, you know, I build DreamCut because like it's all in one, right? Like I create a video and I have all my subtitles. I can just edit everything at once. I then generate my blog and my social, um, you know, text for YouTube. I have the timestamps. I have all of this stuff really made for me. It's able to read the source code of my project and it's able to give me all the content without having to do so much of the work. So my goal for this is to do 90% of the work and I only need to do the, the last five to 10%. So in this case, you know, I don't need to go to Notion and edit uh, and, and create a new text. I don't need to go to ChatGPT app and, you know, like upload my video and then, you know, ask, to uh, read the video, it already has all of that. So, and then it generates uh, the content, it generates the tags, it generates the timestamps for YouTube, and um, I'm able to chat with the video. So for example, I can say how many times did I mention, you know, Sonnet, for example. So 22 times, right? It's really cool. We have a ton of context, and uh, that's uh, you know that's the the beauty of uh, creating your own project. You're solving your own problems, and yeah, I hope you enjoy kind of like following my journey, building uh, an app like this one, and um, you know I'm going definitely going to share more about what all the stuff, and let me know in the comments what you would like to know about building such a project and the tips and tricks. And so, yeah, this is what we have so far. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.